This is Nerd World Problems, things that matter to awesome people. The Mysterious Planet. Yes, the opening shot is hugely impressive, possibly one of the best, if not the best, in the classic series. There is a strong glimmer of hope that this new series would feature effects and production values to rival a feature film. Combined with the writing that Doctor Who gets on a good day, the likes of Vengeance on Varos and Revelation of the Daleks, this return could have been triumphant. Sadly, we're immediately thrust into a studio and the courtroom setting. Out of the three sub-narratives within the trial, Mysterious Planet suffers the most from the trial interference. Early on, this becomes a critical flaw, as anyone who has missed the opening episode would have been lost at any other point in the 14 weeks. It got to the point where BBC Continuity announcers had to read out a short summary of the story so far before the episodes aired. As for the actual story itself, Mysterious Planet has a very middling adventure, which is a shame considering this is what was relaunching the series and that this was the last complete script by Robert Holmes. One gets the feeling it was very prescriptive and he didn't get much leeway. What he was asked for was a very standard, average Doctor Who adventure. Much of the darker material and deeper themes are lost, favouring a more sanitised and family-friendly approach, which kind of goes against what Robert Holmes does best. It's not bad, it's just very straightforward and average. There is some intrigue, but many of the big beats and twists just don't seem to have the impact that they should have. The fact that the Time Lords have stolen Earth, transported it across space and renamed it, should be a huge revelation and warrant a lot of tension, but it just doesn't. Especially as the Doctor is facing the Time Lords directly after the fact anyway. He has a bombastic outburst of outrage, but the Time Lords fob him off with a flimsy excuse and he settles down again satisfied, which just doesn't feel quite right. Beyond the opening shot, there is some other impressive effects work primarily with the L1 and the L3 robots. Both are constructed physically to a high standard and are for the most part convincing, if slightly impractical. The L1 doesn't come across as much of an offensive threat, aside from bursting through a brick wall. The L3, or Drathro, is just too bulky and cumbersome to be perceived as a threat too, not to mention any threat he does have is undercut by the irritating twin assistants. But needless to say, they are brilliant physical creations, and the ingenuity and engineering behind them has got to be admired. One major aesthetic change has also been made. From this story onwards, all recording would be shot on videotape, apart from model shot inserts which would continue to be shot on film. Whilst maintaining a more consistent quality, avoiding the jarring change from video to film, whilst clearer, in retrospect it does look rather cheap and home movie-ish. It's a bit jarring as well, considering that in current times, the more filmic 25 frames per second is the norm. At the time, however, the perception may have been the opposite. If nothing else, it would have made the programme more attractive to overseas buyers. Another requested change for the new series was to the character of the Doctor himself. For much of this series, the character has noticeably mellowed even further, and is far less brash. He actually has moments of charm. As a result, he and Perry are a lot more amicable. It's a pity we didn't get to see this transition. One can only assume that some time has passed since their last appearance in Revelation of the Daleks. Although it's odd that even though the character of the Doctor has changed, the costume still remains the same with the brash coat, even though the waistcoat is different. Surely this was the ideal opportunity to change that up if there were any reservations. Whilst the Doctor is a bit more charming, it does at least feel for this adventure that the character is missing his edge a bit. Sadly, a lot of the characters in this story are pretty forgettable, which is unusual for Robert Holmes. The only notable exception is Tony Selby as Sabalom Glitz, who is a great comic relief character, a sort of intergalactic Del Boy with a lot of potential. He could have made for an interesting companion to bring some freshness to the series and create that double companion dynamic that I mentioned in my Two Doctors review. I hope you've enjoyed this episode-by-episode -episode analysis of The Sixth Doctor. Please let me know your thoughts about the character in the comment section below, and if you want to see more videos like this. In the meantime, please check out my blog, Nerd World Problems, at drtripod.wordpress.com, where you can find typed-up versions of each of these episodes. <laughs>